So we are charging just to show you that I'm not making this up. That's about as low as you can go. This was in somewhat of a controlled circumstance. Um, so yes, uh, if you want to see how I got to 0%, please watch the rest of the video. If you just want to see the data I've collected, please skip to the end of the video. I'll put a timestamp down below. Hello everyone. Um, it is a Saturday, what day have we got? 12th of May, and I'm out on a little bit of a test drive. For no other purposes, just, just curiosity, really. So, there's been talk online um, from various sources um, that the BMS update for the Renault Zoe is basically trickery false, and I've seen the hashtag BMS gate which kind of annoyed me because I don't think this is true because if it were true Renault were to op would open themselves up to a load and load of problems basically this car has a battery lease which means that if the battery capacity drops below, below I think it's 75% in my contract Renault are obliged to either repair or replace the battery now if they were to implement a software fix to artificially increase the state of health, that would be cheating and them going around the battery lease obligations. Now, if it were trickery, the 98% state of health that my battery is currently showing would have been false. So before the battery up, sorry, the BMS update my battery showed a state of health of 84%. After the BMS update, it went up to 98%, and it has stayed at 98% since. Now, if it were trickery, I would not have seen any additional benefit in my driving, so my range wouldn't have increased, which it has. And um, I would still be doing the same um, kilometers per charge as I would prior to the BMS. I'm not. The other things that I'm also noticing since the BMS update, and I have mentioned this before in some of my videos, the range estimate is now spot on. Whereas, if you look back at my earlier videos, I'll see if I can dig up an example and I'll link it in the, you know, the top left thing here. I would have done trips where, say, I, I would put in a route and the Arling would say you can't make it, the estimate would have been very close and I would arrive at my destination with like 30 kilometers to spare or some ridiculous thing. My sense of that, I don't have any evidence to prove it but it's just my own sense of it, is that because the BMS was giving wrong information to the car, the instrument display would not be able to adapt properly. So when my car said I, it had 112 kilometers available after a full charge and a trip B reset, I would I would still be doing what is it, uh, 130 kilometers on a charge more often than not. So. Whereas at the moment, when I do a full charge and I reset my car, it tells me 132 kilometers, and I do 132 kilometers. It's, it's absolutely spot on. So, in order to sort of test that particular theory, a few days ago I drove the car down to 0%. A genuine 0%. The Kansas E uh, dongle or the Kansas E program told me there was 0.0, .0 kilowatt hours available. Now the car didn't stop before someone asks. I didn't drive it down until it physically came to a halt, but it was pretty darn close. So I sat in the car for most of the charge. This was at Mallow train station, so that would be a 22 kilowatt charger, and I charged it up from a zero to 100 percent. 
took a few measurements along the way and I will discuss those measurements um, probably in the next segment which will be shot at a different location because I actually don't have the data in front of me. So cut to myself in a different location discussing the data that I got for that charge. Yeah, so it's a few days later now, and um, as you can tell, I'm not in the car. I'm actually out in Cougambara. Anybody who's familiar with Ireland and sort of West Cork might realise where it is. For those of you who don't know, it is basically a church right there in the middle of a lake. Um, beautiful. The uh, reason I'm here is actually just for my lunch break, but, you know, uh, this, what I'm going to be doing is not really lunch break material, so I'm just going to look for a quiet place to sit and talk to so, you guys. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I found a place to sit. Probably not entirely quiet, there's work going on over there, there's people walking by, but I'm, I'm basically sitting in front of the bathrooms. Anyway, what I wanted to talk to you guys about was the charge test that I have done. Uh, so I'll overlay the table just so that you don't have to look at my close-up for the entire time because you'll be looking at it for the rest of the video and it's a pretty boring one um, but basically the, the table I compiled is just from a few parameters taken from screenshots from Cansat E while I was charging so I arrived at 0% and what I found interesting was that the real state of charge was shown as 2.2 so that basically means there's still 2% left that is either hidden, non-accessible, or somewhere in the middle of that. I definitely couldn't make use of it because the available energy was zero. Um, when I started charging, you can see in the table, initially it said energy to full, roughly a total of 22.4 kilowatt hours, and at the end it said 22.5, so that's pretty accurate. But if you can see in the middle of it, it says at some stage, within about 30 seconds, it went up for a brief moment, it went up to 24.4, which I found pretty strange. In general, though, the energy to full and available energy were pretty much even, like 22s to the, to the low, um, yeah, 20, 22.5 to about low 22s, with the occasional blips at the lower end. So it was basically from around, you know, up to about 12. Which is one of the reasons why I always say that I'd, I'd rather not arrive at a charge point with a very, very low battery because I think it confuses the BMS or it, it's, you know, it, it ends up, um, yeah, uncalibrating the BMS or it becomes a little bit less accurate. Either case, at the end it's still pretty much what it was at the beginning and it's also crucially what I left with when I did the, the, the drive to empty um, test. So it, that was pretty pretty accurate. Um, other things that I found interesting was the uh, voltage. So the, uh, the, the high fold battery pack was at 311.5 volts this particular time. Um, I don't think I've ever seen it that low. Um, it went up pretty quickly to about 350 in the space of about 10%. So like it, it really dropped dropped very, very low and I have no idea why that was. Um, I don't think it actually went as low in the test that I'm, that you're gonna be looking back at, which I did a few days ago. Uh, it's this is this time travel thing and video editing is very, very confusing. Um, either case it was, um, oh yeah. One other thing that I found found very interesting. So when I deduct the real state of charge versus the usable state of charge, I end up with 2.2% that is still available when the usable says zero. When you reach 100%, it's the opposite. There is actually 3% that isn't accessible. So it's really confusing because the real state of charge says 97% at the end, whereas my display says 100 and it had been saying 100 before. So I, I don't know, it's, it's a bit it's a bit sort of strange at either end. So the best thing with regards to battery management is just don't get your battery up too too high on longer journeys and don't drop it too much. It's in the middle where it's most comfortable. 
in my view anyway. People will have different opinions and but this is just this is just mine. Um okay, so back to me in the car a few days ago. This time travel thing is really really strange. Okay, now that we've gotten that out of the way, move forward a few days and I'm now trying to drain my battery. So I charged it to full last night and it had, I think it was 22.2 kilowatt hours available uh, after that charge, it said. Um, and, you know, I'm gonna drive the whole thing empty. I drove into town, did some business into town, and that was about 3 kilometers. It used, I think it's 0.3 or 0.4 kilowatt hours, whatever. Um, and it said it had 21.5 kilowatt hours available after I restarted it. I, mean, I know I'm not supposed to be using mobile phones while I was driving, so you know, if you can't stand me using mobile phones while I was driving, just please look away for the next you know, few seconds. Uh, I am keeping my eyes on the road. I have sunglasses on. I know you can't tell where my eyes are, but you know, I'm keeping my eyes on the road. So after my restart that I did, uh, after I did my business in town, it showed 96.7% state of charge with 21.5 kilowatt hours available. Now, I'm gonna drive well, attempt to drive the car down to as low as zero as possible. I'm keeping an eye on the consumption details according to the R-Link as well as CanZ-E. And we're going to try and see which one is correct. Is the R-Link correct? Is CanZ-E correct? Can I use the full 21.5 kilowatt hours that CanZ-E says that I have available? Now, Kansetti does not make up these numbers. Kansetti only reads them from the CAN bus, which means that the 21.5 is what the car says it has available. Now, a few things that everybody needs to know. That Now, I could be completely wrong on this, but this is my interpretation. Since there is no physical evidence to say I have that many kilowatt hours available, the BMS is trying to do an estimate. Okay? And it is all that is all it is. It is an estimate. It can't say with a hundred percent accuracy that there is 21.5 kilowatt hours available. It is impossible because of, of the plain simple fact there is no physical measurement to do. You have losses with heat, you have losses with conversion rates from AC to DC, you have things like air conditioning using up things, you have all sorts of things using energy. You also have, um, you know, it's not like you have, uh, say, a petrol tank with 45 litres worth of petrol and you can say, I have 41 litres worth of petrol because these are my measurements. You can't do that with an electric car. You, you just can't. There's 90-something individual cells in the bottom of my car which have a so-called capacity of X and a voltage of Y. And, you know, and the battery management is making its guesses. The lower down in energy the batteries get, you have other factors like the lowest cell in the chain. You can't drop the voltages below the X, Y, and the, between a certain level. I don't know exactly what that level is, but what I do know is that when I was charging my car from empty to full, at the start, the the, the high voltage pack showed 311 volts worth of um, the voltage coming out of the pack. When I fully charged it, it went to the nominal 395, which is what um, the pack is rated at. So there's variables, and the variables are particularly large at the lower end. So at the lower end is where you will find the most errors. I am personally of the opinion that you should try not to get the battery in the low battery warning section. So I try, when I'm driving, I try and arrive at a charger roughly around 20%, maybe a little bit lower, but no lower than 15 I try. It doesn't always work, just because of where the, where the charges are located or whatever happens along the way with my consumption, but that's what I try. So, 
not to get the voltage too low. I also believe that when the voltage gets that low, that's when the battery degradation happens, similar to when you actually charge it to full and leave it sitting for excessive amount of time. That's when the batteries will degrade the worst. So it's sort of more of a my own personal battery management, if you will. Now, when you charge the battery to full, since you're not using the full capacity of the battery pack, you are not actually charging to full. So this particular car has a inaccessible part of the battery capacity. Like vast majority of electric cars, I think Tesla is one of the few that will actually allow you to charge to 100% capacity and use 100% capacity. Um, the rest of the cars have inaccessible capacity. This is a cheap software wise way of doing some battery maintenance, battery management. So in the Zoe, this particular car has a 26 kilowatt hour battery. I have a roughly 23 kilowatt accessible. So there's three kilowatt that is actually is not accessible to help with the battery stability. And so far, as far as I can tell at least, it works fine because um, I have 98% state of health after three and a half years, thereabouts. Anyway, listen, I'm going to stop yapping. Um, I'm in Cork City. I'm going to do sort of like a bit of a circle. I'm going to go from Mallow to Cork City to Fermoy, then back to Mallow, and then drive the rest of the battery down around Mallow. Just, you know, try and get through it in some form of meaningful thing. And I'm literally just wasting two hours of my life trying to prove this. So, you know, a bit of appreciation for that would be nice. Uh, so if you are uh, looking for a useful video or something that actually makes for fun entertaining video to watch this one isn't it we will see you guys later on okay so i've just pulled into a petrol station in the wonderful little village of glanmire where i actually used to live many years ago um just to show you the situation as it is at the moment and just to show you one of the weird things that i've noticed so here is my consumption details. Now my car is still turned on. I haven't turned it off yet. So I've used, so far I've used 6.2 kilowatt hours in energy. I've recovered 0.9, okay? So my total consumption is 5.1 kilowatt hours. So if I go to my trip details, have a look at this. It's saying my total consumption is five kilowatt hours, which is correct because I have actually regained um, I've used 5.1, so 5 is correct, but look at this. The energy saved is 0. So that leads me to believe that the energy saved kilowatt hours actually will only show the first decimal point of how much you have regenerated without rounding it off. Because as you saw, um, I, use, I regenerated 0 0.9. If you were using proper roundup figures, this should be saying 1, and the 5 is correct, because it's 5.1 kilowatt hours. So that could explain some of the people saying that you, the R-Link will tell you that you can't use the full capacity of the battery. It's partially correct, because it basically is just showing you rounded up or non-rounded numbers at the same time, which is completely inaccurate. At least do the same thing for these things. Uh, you know, if you ask me, that should say 5.1, and that should say 0 0.9, which it does in a different part of the exact same system. If you go into the electric vehicle in the consumption details, there you go. Weird, isn't it? Now, let's just actually see how much um, our... Um, can said he says that I've actually got available. So I left Mallow with 22.5. I've used 5.1 kilowatt hours. So Can said he should tell me my math is terrible. So 22, 21, sorry, 21.5 minus 5.1 is. I think we're just going to cut to me using a calculator for this. This is actually embarrassing at this stage. So 21.5 minus 5.1 means that it should say 16.4 kilowatts available. Let's see what it actually says. So I go into the advanced thing and I go into charging. 
and it says 15.6 so according to this I have actually lost 15.6 instead of 16.4 it actually is giving me an inconsistent number which I would somewhat expect this is weird so just in case people think that I am uh, lying uh, I'll just take a screenshot of this so that people can actually see it so the available energy now says 15.6 interesting Okay, so we're back on the way. Um, I've now used 7.1 kilowatt hours uh, of energy and I have regenerated one. Now, I can't really show you because I'm driving and I don't really want to stop, but my R link under the trip meter now says six for the total consumption and one for the energy regenerated. So, the energy saved kilowatt hour number is not rounded off so if you regenerate 0 0.9 that will say zero the total consumption kilowatt hours is the total consumption kilowatt hours kilowatt hours minus the amount regenerated rounded off how many inaccuracies are you going to get with that Huge. So basically the trip report is not a good way to measure how much energy you've actually used. Okay, so I am at the super value in Fermoy. I've just driven basically Mallow Cork from Moy. Still haven't turned the car off. Uh, I will be doing that in a minute because I'm going to go inside and actually buy something to drink because I'm absolutely parched. So, what is Canset E showing that I have available? Uh, let's see now. It is telling me I have. Right. So, it is saying 12.5. Um, why am I doing this? I'm just going to take a screenshot and I'll overlay it. Um, I'm definitely, I definitely need a, um, a drink. So it is saying um, um, 9.7 kilowatt hours available and 12.5 energy to full. So I think it's getting a little bit confused now. I now have a total battery capacity of, uh, what is it? We're going to have to use the calculator again, isn't it? Uh, it is 21.3, that's not bad, that is not bad. Now I have used, okay, so I, this, this is what the R link is telling me, I have used the consumption of 12 points, I'm just going to turn this off, it's probably blowing in the camera. Um, 12.7 kilowatt hours used and two regenerated, so my actual net consumption is 10.7 also known as 10.7 is also known as 11 over here yeah weird isn't it so my total trip over here also says 11 yeah there's round off errors all over the shop which kind of annoys me uh, if someone with a scientific background round off errors annoy the heck out of me so my 10.7 turns into 11 on every single display. Yeah, that's weird. So, okay, so 10.7 and apparently, according to this, I've used, well, I've, I've energy to full 12.7, which is, you know, a bit weird again. It doesn't appear to actually take into, cons into account the regenerated energy, because if I add two kilowatts that I've regenerated onto the 9.7 I'm back to 11.7 which is also slightly incorrect yeah it's weird I'm gonna turn the car off for a little while buy something to drink inside come back and see what the car says after a five minute break okay so I've gone um, into the shop and I've bought myself a drink and the car has been turned off now um, I've just taken a screenshot of Canzetti again. It's now showing me the available energy as 10.5 kilowatt hours, which is. I'll just get the previous screenshot up. 
Um, before I turned it off, where are you? Uh, boom, 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 boom. Before I turned it off, which was a, at 11.48, so about 15 minutes ago, it showed me 9.7 kilowatts available. So it has gained uh, 0 0.8 kilowatt hours, which is roughly what I was missing, maybe a bit less than what I was missing, because it is showing me 11.5 kilowatt hours to full. So that means that the total energy capacity is 22, so there's a 0.5 kilowatt hour discrepancy there. Which can be heat, which can be losses, which can be whatever. But it just goes to show that I actually can't really depend on can setting numbers. It also shows to me that your best bet would be to look at the range estimate and judge your distances from there that's so far my conclusions i'm not entirely certain yet um but i'm going to try and drive uh get rid of the 10.5 kilowatt hours that i now have available according to kanza my only problem is is that i i really just need to find a route that i can drive yeah that act that i can actually drive that is nice uh right let's get going so hello from um, a wonderfully quiet Donnerail Park. If you ever sort of are in Ireland in the North Cork area, I can thoroughly recommend a visit to Donnerail Park. It's not the reason why I'm here. The only reason I'm here is because it's a quiet place to pull in. Now, uh, where are we on the battery usage sticks? So when I was in a Fermoy, my total energy used was... Now, I'm saying this off the top of my head. I haven't actually looked back at the footage. If I'm wrong, I'll put it down at the bottom. I've used 12.7 kilowatt hours of energy with a recovery, I think it was a 2 on the nose. So, um, I'm now in Donnerill Park. I've used an additional 7.5 kilowatt hours, which makes my total consumption uh, 20.3 three kilowatt hours is that correct uh 12.7 plus 7.5 is yes 20 point 20.2 oh god my math is so bad it's really embarrassing at this stage so 12.7 kilowatt used in previous thing and there'll be 19.7 yeah 20.2 20 20.2 20 .2 kilowatt hours energy used a total recovery i think it said in fermoy 2.0 and i'm at 1.2 at the moment so that'll be 3.2 which means my net consumption is uh 17.1 kilowatt hours thereabouts so uh, yeah, so here is my um, consumption uh, figures. Um, I did a few bits of motorway stent, and then you know, yeah. Uh, anyway, so if I go to my trip meter, here is my total energy consumption at seventeen, which would be the twenty point. What did I say? Twenty point two minus the three point whatever. So that's seventeen. So that that's where that figure comes from. Um. Let's see what Can City says. So let's grab my phone. I'll take a screenshot of Can City, which I will overlay so that it actually is uh, easier for all you guys to see. So let me just take a screenshot there. And right. So I will overlay that. Um, so, oh God. Come on now. Where are you? I just managed to close the freaking screen. Uh, apologies for this. So, uh, it's saying 4.1 energy uh, available. And a total energy to full of 18.1. Which means that my total battery capacity, according to Kansas City at the moment, is 22.2. We are gaining. So, um... The 4 kilowatt hours worth of energy available, if you add that to the 17 point something that you, I've consumed, you are again 
getting pretty damn close to the 22.5 energy that I have available. Um, so, so far everything seems to be pretty accurate. So I'm at 18.5% state of charge, so I have 18.5% to drive down and I'm about 15-20 oh, kilometers from home. So I think I will do a few circles and I will get to back to you guys when I'm close to zero. Um, yeah, we will see you guys later. Okay, so my low battery warning light just came on. Sorry for the alarm lights, but I'm sort of parked on the side of the road and alarm lights seemed appropriate. Now, where am I with regards to consumption details? So, vehicle, electric vehicle consumption details. Here we go, 9.3 kilowatt hour used. Um, 1.5 generated, regenerated, so we're right on track. Um, what was it? 12.7. Uh, so, uh, 12.7 in Formoy, which means there'll be 21, 22 kilowatt hour used and about 3 kilowatt hours regenerated. So, that is what is reflected over here. It now. As I said before, this could be anywhere from um, 19.4 to 18.6 because it's rounded off, whereas that number isn't, so it's very much so not the way to go. Let's see what Kanzetti says at this particular junction. So again, I will take a screenshot and overlay it here so you guys can actually see it. Oh, come on. Where are you? Connect. Refresh. <coughs> come on. Oh, for some reason it does not want to connect. Please bear with me for a second. Right, so, like I said, um, I'll take a screenshot and overlay it here. So what it's saying at the moment is that I have 2.7 kilowatt hours of energy available and a total energy to full of 18 point, oh it just changed actually, which is interesting to say the least, I'll take another screenshot there, it just changed over to something different. Uh, it says 2.8 kilowatt hours available and 18.9, so it's actually, it actually gained what did it gain? It gained 0.1 of a kilowatt hours and 0.5 on the, on the energy to full. See, this is what I'm saying, is that the numbers, if you go by 100% numbers, the BMS is going to actually have to make estimates because like, it's based on pack temperature, ambient temperature, voltages, heat loss, like the actual driving um, thing isn't 100% efficient, so the 22.5 that you have in your battery, you will not be able to use 100% of that because some of that is going to get lost in the heat transfers. Uh, then you have the auxiliary things like um, air conditioning, lights, wipers, all that kind of stuff. It all uses some energy, not hell of a lot, but some energy. So uh, the BMS by itself, if you say that because the BMS says you have 22.5 kilowatt hours available means you're going to have to use 22.5 kilowatt hours, that is not entirely accurate. Is this thing telling you garbage? No, it is not. Uh, but it does require a bit of understanding on how it works, how it measures it, and um, what you actually have to work with. Now, I'm going to try and drive to a charger, drive this thing down to as close as zero as I can, and I'll give you an update when I get there. Okay, so I am down to, uh, well, probably less than 8%, and yeah, I'm, I'm still at pretty much the exact same spot as I was uh, the last time I checked in. It's because I drove from here to Mallow, made a turn at around about, came, well, after I checked the charging point in Mallow, I actually drove all the way back, and I'm now going to drive back. The charge point is about 5 kilometers away, and uh, I probably have about 5 kilometers of range left, but it's mostly downhill, so it should be fine. If I run out of battery on the side of the road as a result of this experiment, I it that would be really, really 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 stupid so let's see what Kansetti says about my current situation um, 
Sorry about all the background noise. Okay, so available energy, it says 1.2 kilowatt hours and energy, 1.1 kilowatt hours, energy to full 19.4. Um, it changed again there from probably a little bit higher, but that gives me a total energy of, uh, excuse me, it's gone back up to 19.9, it's constantly altering this. So that's, that's one of the things. Oh, here, it's gone up to 20.1. Just take another screenshot and I'll leave it. This is what I mean with if you go by completely raw numbers, CanZE can tell you all sorts of things, or the BMS can tell you all sorts of things. One of the other things I was thinking was I was driving is that the battery this morning when I left was at 11 degrees. Right now, my, my battery is probably around 24 degrees. Not sure if you can actually read that. Um, I wonder if the charging screen actually says something about mean battery. Um, I mean, is there any mention here of battery temperature? No, there is not. Okay, well that's a shame. Then you'll have to take my word for it. Uh, but at the moment, my um, battery mean temperature is uh, mean battery temperature twenty four. Um, so it went up by 13 degrees during the drive of the last 130 kilometers. The other thing I'd like to point out as well is that my car told me this morning I could do 131 kilometers. I'm now at 131.8 and it is absolutely spot on. So again, the range estimate is pretty darn accurate uh, with this new um, BMS. It's not even new, it's nearly a year old at this stage. Um, so I'm going to drive to the charging station and see if I can get it down to as close to zero as I can or at least I'll try and get the limited performance but it'll just depend on how, what and where. Uh, so I'll see you guys at the charger of Mallow train station. Okay, so I made it to the charger at Mallow train station. A limited performance. I have no idea what actual battery percentage it is but we will find out soon enough. So here we are. Now, the previous one, and I said, was 12.7, so that means that is, it's 23.5, thereabouts? Oh, my maths. I really should not have done this, because my, you know, quick math as uh, another vlogger um, says my quick math is absolutely terrible uh, okay so 12.7 plus 11.8 means that I've used a total of 24.5 um, kilowatt hours if I sub subtract the 4.1 which I think I think I'll put the correct numbers underneath here if if I made a mistake, but I think that when I was in Fromoy, it said energy recovered 2.0. That means that right now my energy recovered is uh, is 4.1. So if I sub subtract 4.1 means I've used 20.4 kilowatt hours when I left this morning it's at 21.5 so I have lost 1.1 kilowatt hour somewhere um, if my maths is correct um, is that accurate I think so but obviously it also depends on how much energy I've left in the battery so let's check that um, and I shall tell you. So it currently says available energy 0 0.1. And um, let me just wait for it to fully to fully refresh. And I shall show you how the numbers happen. So here it says, if you look at it right now, it says 18.4. Now it has changed, I'm going to take a screenshot again, to 19.1. And I bet you if I keep on sitting here for just a little while longer, it will actually end up energy to full. It will end up going all the way up to about 2021. Um, but I'm not going to wait for that. Uh, because I've got better things to be doing with my afternoon. This was enough time wasted on this. Um, 
Okay. Basically, see it's at 19.9 at the moment. And, um, like I said, if I sit here for a little while longer, waiting for everything to recover, or if I turn the car off, which is also what happens, is that you turn the car off for a little while and everything just resets, or, or, or I don't know exactly what it does. Um, but it, it, it's like it recalculates everything. Really strange. Uh, so, voltage heat map. I'm just going to take a quick screenshot of the voltage heat map, if Kansas E will be so kind to actually... Here we go. To actually give me the voltage heat map. As you can see, there there's a lot of red on this map. Um, it kind of means that my the battery cells are pretty darn low. Um, I think when I started this morning, the actual voltages were close to four, um, four volt uh, of each of them. So you know they've gone down considerably. Uh, I've been sitting here for about four minutes now with my camera turned on I'm gonna go back into my charging screen and I'm gonna see whether or not everything has recovered so here we go now it's saying still available energy just 0 0.1 kilowatt hours but now it's saying 20.7 energy to full okay so this is in the space of a few minutes the energy to full has now recovered why I don't know um is it making this up? No, it isn't, because if I actually were to plug in right now, it will actually use that amount of money to get this, the, the thing full. It's like the cells just balance internally. Um, so if I just go back to my voltage heat map, wonder can I actually compare those two now, uh, after about a minute or two of uh, just sitting still. Will there be much of a change? There is a little bit of a change, actually. Um, yeah. See, things constantly adjust. So, the voltages constantly go up and down, temperatures change, and all that kind of stuff. But I think, overall, the BMS is trying its darnest to actually make sense of it all. Here we go, 21.6 energy to full. So there you go, is at the lower end, the BMS seems to be very, very, very confused. So when I first arrived here, which was about five minutes ago, a little over five minutes ago, it said 18.4 energy to full, now it's saying 21.6. I mean, that is 3.5 kilowatt hour worth of a difference. It's insane. Uh, anyways, I managed to use my entire battery yet again and managed to do 136.5 kilometers on it which is quite quite good i'm going to plug the car in i'm going to charge it into full go about my business gather the data later on today and i will give you a full synopsis. so we are charging just to show you that i'm not making this up that's about as low as you can go this was in somewhat of a controlled circumstance